so that those who those who haven't managed to see the court will still get the benefit. So guys, great to see you on the Saturday morning. Great to see you on the Saturday morning. I want to share something today. And I want to get you to ask yourself some questions. So very poignant questions that will start to disrupt your thought process. The first question I want to ask you is what is success? Not what is success to you, or not how do you measure success, but what is success? And I'll tell you why I ask these questions. See, we all have choices to make on a daily basis. Hundred, possibly thousands, at least, of choices that we make on a daily basis. Some are conscious, some are unconscious. Some happen with our direct attention. Some seemingly just fall into line. But you see, your decision-making process generally involves two things. Choices or excuses. That's generally what happens. You make choices or you make excuses. And your decision-making process will be determined by how seriously you take yourself. Now you're probably thinking, okay, um, the way he's going off on a different angle today, you're absolutely right. I want you to get yourself question, asking yourself those deep questions. How serious do you take yourself? Are you serious or are you curious? Because when you're serious about your progress, you're serious about your life, that has you adopting a completely different thought process from when you're just curious. When you really determine what success looks like to you, making choices becomes very easy because your choices will either direct you toward your outcome or away from your outcome. Quite simple. It no longer becomes a complicated conundrum. You no longer have to think too deeply about it. So then that gets you thinking about the question I initially asked. What is success to you? How do you frame success? When you think about the word success, what feelings does it bring up? Does it bring up fear? Does it bring up uncertainty? Does it bring up want and desire? You see, thoughts travel through our mind at a rate of knots. We can't consciously control our thoughts but we can absolutely direct and understand our feelings. And feelings are usually determined from either circumstance or the questions you're asking yourself. Hence why I asked you again, what is success? What, what is success? You see, we're all given gifts. Whether you believe in God, whether you believe in the universe, we're all here for a purpose. We're all here for a reason. And the gifts we're given are of immeasurable volume. Now I'm going to start digging in because it is your duty to uncover, to find your potential. When I start using language like duty, then we take ourselves to a whole other place. This brings me right back to the initial question of what is success. Let me tell you what my definition of success is. Success is a responsibility. Hear me when I'm saying this. Success is a responsibility and it's your responsibility to channel, drive and direct yourself towards success. So when I use words like duty, when I use words like responsibility, this changes the perspective completely. This changes the frame. This should, in actual fact, change how you now start looking toward success. Give me a thumbs up if this is making sense. Give me a thumbs up if this is actually starting to resonate. Because when you look at success as a responsibility, all of a sudden we have a different way of thinking. Okay, when you say responsibility, what do you mean, Kev? I mean, success is your responsibility. You have to make a choice that there is no other option, no other outcome. 
You know what they say? You burn the bridge. Don't ever have a plan B because your plan B will become your plan A. Understand that success is absolutely your responsibility. And before I go any further, I've got something to say. Tyler, is that yourself or is that uh, your mum that's joined? Yeah, yeah, that's me. I, I was waiting in a different meeting length by accident. <laughs> no issue, no issue. Well, in actual fact, the reason why I stopped the meeting at a hall. Tyler, is it your birthday today? Uh, yeah. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. You, <laughs> and, you know, I stopped to acknowledge that because I appreciate the fact you're choosing to spend some time with me on your birthday. I salute you, my friend. I salute you. We can you. hang out any day, Kevin. I don't mind. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So as I said, I'm talking about success being a responsibility. And I'm not talking about success in just one area of your life. At Entra, we're not singularly focused. We're focused across three different paradigms. Physical, personal, professional. When you make a choice that you have to be successful in all areas, that you accept no responsibility other than, or sorry, you accept no choice other than being successful across all areas of your life, that's when you find happiness. Success physically could be determined by you're in great shape or you drop the weight that you need to or you're eating healthily or you're making steps towards what you determine as success on a daily basis. From a personal perspective, that's spending QT, quality time with those around you that mean everything to you. And from a professional perspective, yeah, ultimately we're going to measure success professionally to some degree by your status, by your bank balance. And that's a whole other conversation that I'm going to have because when we look forward to success, I don't want you just to be focused on net worth because net worth is a cash sum. I want you to be focused on cash flow. How much cash has been created by that net worth figure? Why do I say that? Because is it not correct that people are living longer and longer these days? When you've got cash flow that's been derived from your net worth, it doesn't matter how long you live because the cash flow is consistent. But as I said, that's a whole nother video. I'm going to dive real deep into that. But you see, when you start asking the question, what am I actually prepared to do to create the level of success that I want? What am I prepared to do? That gives you an understanding, a knowing, correct? But here's the thing I want to say. Knowing and doing are at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah? Knowing and doing are at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So the question you need to ask yourself, are you prepared to do whatever it takes to create the success you're looking for? This is where you now need to start questioning yourself. This is where you now need to start asking yourself. Obstacles are going to appear. That's life. You never made a great driver on a straight road. You never made an incredible sailor on smooth seas. Obstacles are going to happen. But are you determined to the point of no other choice, no other outcome with regards to your success? Because here's one of the things I say frequently. There are a thousand and one trails to the top of the mountain. If success, if an obstacle comes in front of you, there are multiple things you should be thinking. Am I going to go over, under, around it, or through it? But that obstacle shouldn't deter you from your outcome. That obstacle is a challenge, and you're going to get challenges. And guess what? These challenges, what they will ultimately do is start to make you think about where I'm going. That's what these challenges will do. They will create strength. They will create determination. Challenges can sometimes take the shape of adversity. And here's the thing I want you to understand. Warriors, my friend, are created in adversity. Warriors, my friend, are created in adversity. But here's what I truly want you to start thinking about. 
Ah, man, here's what I truly want you to start thinking about. You see, in order to be successful, in order to achieve success, would you all agree that a level of transformation must be made? You've got to transform into the individual that can create the success you're looking for. And here's the thing that many people don't truly understand. When you look at transformation, the impact must first be made internally. You have to transform from the inside out because your internal world is a direct representation of your external world. And until you start looking at, what do I need to do to transform from the inside out? Nothing changes. And you know the old cliche, if nothing changes, nothing changes. You must overcome the internal blockages that are stopping you from achieving your success. And I'm going to lean forward when I'm talking to you about this. Does that actually mean you're going to have to go into some dark places? There are some reservoirs, there are some crevices of some, some scars, some things that may have happened. And you've put those in a box. You've wrapped up the box very, very tightly. You've taped up the box. You put that box in a room. You've locked the door. You've thrown away the key. You've built a brick wall outside. You get what I'm saying. Those crevices, those scars are way deep down. But here's the thing. You must overcome and you must heal from the inside out. You've got to address those. And those scars were created generally in childhood between the age of two and eight years old. Why do I say that? Because that's when your belief system is created. So you have to go deep. You have to understand. You have to face the things that are tucked away in those crevices. And what you'll actually find is this. When you address the younger, internal child within, you're going to have to have a conversation. You're going to have to truly let that child within know one, whatever's touched them, whatever's scarred them, whatever's created that blockage, it's okay to release it. You've got to be able to forgive yourself for stopping yourself achieving your outcome. And then you have to let your inner child know that you're safe. I've had a number of coaches and mentors throughout my life. And I had a very high level coach, probably about four years ago. And man, oh man, he didn't let me off the hook ever. And in our coaching calls, I often said, I don't like you. <laughs> and he'd respond by telling me, Kev, you know what, I love you. Don't worry, I love you. And I would frequently tell him I don't like you. You know why? Because he was getting me to face myself. He was getting me to face my own demons, the things that were blocking me and stopping me from achieving my greatness. But it's only when you address those things, you identify what has been stopping you from becoming incredible, it's only then can you truly take yourself to the next level. This is what I'm talking about. Transformation must happen internally. So... When we talk about personal development, why do you think we talk about that's a consistent journey? Because that's the only way you truly create transformation. Here's what I want you to understand. Transformation comes from within and it's not a strategy. Because when things aren't necessarily going exactly as they should do, what a lot of people think straight away is, okay, so what can I do to make things different? How can I address what's going on to achieve a different outcome? That's not the answer, because immediately what you're going to is strategy. Would you all agree you are exactly where you are today because of choices, decisions, and actions you've taken up until now? And would you also agree that those choices, decisions, and actions are based upon your belief system? Therefore, in order to achieve a different outcome, a short-term re result will be, yeah, let me change the strategy. Let me look at how I can do things differently. But that's only a short-term fix because that doesn't change you within. That doesn't change how you impact and interact with the world. This can sometimes get very uncomfortable. 
because you may have to open up what they call Pandora's box, right? And you open Pandora's box and oftentimes all of these things come flying out at you. But it's only when you clear and understand how you heal internally can you truly move forward. Your why is your deep down driving force. <clears throat> and when you consistently speak to your why, what that will do is interact with the actions you take. So let's come full circle. What is success? Success is a responsibility and your responsibility is achieved through transformation. And transformation generally comes from understanding your inner self, understanding your why and being prepared to do whatever it takes in order to achieve your outcome. Who's with me on this journey? Who's with me on understanding that success is truly your responsibility, that there should be no other outcome? You see, we all have dreams that we should be aspiring to. And then what we do, we pick apart those dreams and we systematically create goals. Dreams, goals. The big empty space in between is called action. But dreams, my friend, are oftentimes destroyed by what? Destroyed by excuses. That's what dreams are destroyed by. Because fear starts to ruin its ugly head. And then what you do, you have this conversation with yourself that oh, maybe this isn't the right time. Maybe there are other things I need to do instead of exactly what I need to do right now. Maybe I need to go and hang the washing out instead of take the actions I need to do right now. Maybe there are some other chores I need to be attending to instead of the actions I need to do right now. And what is all of this? All of this is procrastination because that's what's come from excuses. And I've said before on many occasions, procrastination generally only happens for one reason, because you haven't made it important enough yet. So have you actually decided that your dream, your goal, your aspiration is your number one priority? Because until you decide that there is no other option, that your dream, your goal is your number one priority, you're going to find it difficult to achieve the outcome you're looking for. You must continue the internal work because the internal work is what is absolutely going to drive you. And when I'm talking about driving you, here's a question I want to ask. Have you yet identified your motivators? Because we're all motivated by one of two things, by pain or by pleasure. But here's the downside. If you identify that you're motivated by pain, that must change, and I'm going to tell you why. When you're motivated by pain, that generally leads to complacency, and I'm going to give you a very simple understanding as to why. Pain is here, you're motivated by pain. When things become really uncomfortable, when things are hurting, when you're in a spot that you don't like, when you hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. at that point, many people decide, I now must take action. So you're motivated by pain. You dig deep, you take action, you start moving towards your goal. But here's why I say that's an issue. Because you're going to get far enough away from the pain because you've taken enough action, right? And you're going to start seeing some results. But the further we get away from the pain is the more you forget about how painful it was. I'm going to give you a prime example. How many women go through pregnancy and then childbirth and through that excruciating moment, they say, oh, that was hell. I'm never having a child again. <laughs> and yet, maybe a year, two years, three years, how many years later, they decide, oh, you know what? I really want another bundle of joy in my life. But yet previously, they forgot the pain they went through. They said they'd never have another child again. That's what happens 
And that's likeness to be motivated by pain. When you're motivated away from pain, you're going to get to a point and you forget how painful it actually was. And when you forget how painful it was, at that point, it no longer reminds you and motivates you. What you must do if you identify that you're motivated by pain is think about your goal, think about your outcome and understand how can I flick the switch in order to ensure that I now start becoming motivated by pleasure. Because when you're motivated by, motivated by pleasure, let me tell you how things are spun completely 180 on their head. As you start to achieve, as you start to have some small successes, you then become grateful, excited, and drive towards what? The achievement of more success. This is what happens when you're motivated by pleasure. When you're motivated by, motivated by pleasure, at no point, do you stop wanting to achieve more? Because the endorphins, the highs that you receive from achieving success, they keep you driving, they keep you moving forward. Identify how you can flip that switch so that it's a pleasure that's going to drive you, that's going to pull you towards your outcome. Understand what you need to do. And that is the internal work. That's looking at ourselves and really thinking, Okay, how do I make things different? If you notice, I'm always asking questions. And the reason I'm always asking questions is because that allows you then to lean on the resource, the resource of your unconscious mind. Guys, understand you've got the most incredible resources and outcome achievers at your fingertips. As you go through the rest of this weekend, I want you to really take on board that success is your duty. It's your responsibility. It shouldn't be a choice. It should be an absolute must. Because we can either live a life of mediocrity or we can live a life of excellence where we excel in every area we choose. And what success looks like to you will invariably be completely different to what it looks like to someone else. And here's what I want to remember before I close out today. You should never be in competition with anyone apart from the man or woman in the mirror. Understand and identify what success looks like to you. Make the decision, become decisive that it's your responsibility and go after it as though your life depended on it. Guys, understand that all kind of will be achieved one step at a time. I'm committed to bringing as much value as I possibly can in each and every single interaction we have. The question I will leave you with, as always, is how committed are you to yourself? Tyler, have an incredible birthday. Rebecca, enjoy the celebration with your son's birthday, which is tomorrow. Maria and Greg, have a great weekend. Looking forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Take care, Mr. One Step, and I'm signing out. See you soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.